Welcome back, everybody, from one young soul to another. Chapter 8, Finding Our Identity. And I just recorded like two, three minutes, and then my app crashed, and apparently none of it saved. So I think that's the universe's way of telling me that that recording sucked. And this is the one that's going to work. So we're starting over from scratch here. And this was a very important chapter, I think, because looking back, and I detailed in the book, but looking back with even more perspective on things, I realized that a lot of the issues that I laid out in the earlier chapters were due to not having an identity. And I realized, again, I realized at the time, or at least at the time of writing the book, that my identity was not quite as strong as it had been in the past. But I realized more lately that it was even worse than I thought. <laughs> that my identity was, I don't want to say non-existent, but it just, I didn't, I was kind of lost. And that is, I think what I went through was a perfect example of what can happen if you don't have a strong identity. Because now I have a strong identity. I know what I I know who I am. I know what I want. I know where I want to go. So the things that happen to me, like good or bad, don't necessarily like throw me off either way. And it's I mean it's huge because it's so easy to get shaken by things, especially the bad things that happen or things we don't expect. And we don't have an identity we're kind of just like floating in, in, in space. And we get hit by an asteroid and we're just floating in another direction. We don't have a North Star to always look towards to get us back on track. So having that, that shining light kind of in our identity really helps you overcome basically anything I think that happens to you. Or, I mean, we can overcome anything. Obviously there's some things that are worse than other things, but so this, I think, is a chapter that can really help people because I think there's a lot of people out there that don't have an identity because they don't really know what they want to do. And there's an important thing I got from Atomic Habits, the book by James Clear that I put in here that I wanted to read. So it says, one solution is to avoid making any single aspect of your identity an overwhelming portion of who you are. In the words of investor Paul Graham, keep your identity small. The more you let a single belief define you, the less capable you are of adapting when life cha challenges you. If you tie everything up in being the point guard or the partner at the firm or whatever else, then the loss of that facet of your life will wreck you. And that was a huge revelation, I think, for me, because that's, that's essentially what happened to me. I... I don't even know. I think I said this in the last video. I've talked for like 10 minutes now, but half of it was deleted. So uh, what I said in the last video was how, uh, or the deleted video, was that the problems last year where I got so wrapped up in this girl were due to the fact that I wanted to be a sports writer for so long. And then I kind of realized over time that I wasn't sure if that was what I was passionate about. And I didn't really have anything to fill that void. I knew I wanted to write, I just didn't know what I wanted to write about. And I was trying to fill that void with that girl, I think. So now, you know, I have that void filled. Like I figured out what I want to do and I'm more comfortable with who I am. So hopefully these problems won't repeat themselves in the future. But yeah, that that was a huge deal was it was recognizing that I had a void and that uh, I needed to fill it with something something on the inside, not anything external. And that's what is important about this, you know, don't, or keep your identity small and don't tie everything up into one thing. Because like, if you tie your identity up in your relationship, what happens when that relationship ends? You're nothing, or you feel like you're nothing. You know, what happens if you play sports your whole life, which I, I had an example earlier, earlier in the book about that, this girl that does a TED talk, that was a soccer player her whole life. And as soon as that was over, she felt lost for months because she didn't know who she was. And, and this can happen with a job. Like you have a job and you, it's a job you're really proud of. Maybe it's your dream job. And all of a sudden it's gone. 
and you don't ha you feel like you don't have anything. And and one of the tips I give um, was also from Atomic Habits about breaking your identity down into not exactly who you are or what you do, but the reasons why you're able to do what you do. So here's another example. So I'm an athlete becomes I'm the type of person who is mentally tough and loves a physical challenge. I'm a great soldier transforms into I'm the type of person who is disciplined, reliable and great on a team. I'm the CEO translates to I'm the type of person who builds and creates things. So you can see that, you know, you're taking this like one title down of, of a person and you're breaking it into the things that make them good at that or the things that they enjoy that the reasons they enjoy doing that job. So like I'm the CEO, for example, turns into I'm the type of person who builds and creates things. So if you lose your job as CEO or manager or whatever it may be, you can look back at that thing. And this may be even a beneficial exercise to actually write these things down. So if you do lose something in life, you can go back to that and it'll give you, again, it'll kind of give you that North Star to say, hey, like these are the traits that build me up into this and this is where I can go with the moving forward. So I'm the type of person who builds and creates things. You can go anywhere with that. You can go from being a CEO to building houses or creating content online, writing books. Like you can do it, building another business on your own. You know, it, it would be very easy to flip that switch because you know who you are deep down. You know the reasons why you liked being the CEO or the manager and you're able to take those traits and parlay them into something else. And, you know, I'm an athlete becomes I'm the type of person who is mentally tough and loves a physical challenge. And this is actually perfect. I'm wearing my What Would David Goggins Do t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> what Would Goggins Do? So not everyone probably knows who David Goggins is, but... Basically, he actually I wrote about him early in the book, so you should know about him. At least watch the this the video or the um, the chapter two video I talk about him. But he was a big motivation to me, <clears throat> just being able to overcome so much. And you know, he was in the military and achieved a lot in the military. And once he was done with that, or actually, he, even when he was still in the military, he also became an ultra marathon runner. So he recognized that like he's not just in the military. He's a person that loves insanely hard physical challenges that, that most people can't accomplish. So that's a great example of someone that took the characteristics and traits they have and was able to turn it into something else, something different. And you know, once he stopped, I don't think he does ultra marathoning now, he might still, but um, there's always something else and he also achieved the world record for pull-ups so like that's just another like he's there's always gonna be something next that he can accomplish no matter what as long as it's a physical challenge and I'm sure he may face kind of an identity crisis once he gets older and maybe isn't able to to do the same things but you know that's it's I'm sure it's something that he's gonna be able to figure out because he's done it to this point so I think this was a really big chapter because and see, this was this was from an article I wrote myself, actually. Oh, this was the article I first wrote. I'm gonna put this article in the description because I think I'm gonna look back at it one day as like the turning point of my life. So after I decided that I wasn't gonna chase this girl anymore, I basically wrote like a precursor to this book. It was a big article. I think it was like an 11 minute read, 2000 words, maybe something like that. It was a long article. And basically detailing like, exactly the the rabbit hole I put myself down and and how I was trying to bring myself out of it and so this I this was one of the the end the ending paragraphs placing a piece of your identity onto the shoulders of another person will always cause cause heartache people come and go no matter what you tell yourself and the search for a significant other we often build a false reality in our heads we think about the future and what could be when it comes crashing down it hurts but not because something significant was taken away from us. The movie we directed in our head had a different ending than we originally planned. So I really love that article. And again, I think in my big, big beautiful house I have one day, once all these creations I have make me rich, I'm going to have this book, going to have the next book. I'm going to have that article 
placed in a special place that shows where I began at, basically. And, hell, I should also take a screenshot of my channel right now at 13 subscribers and maybe throw that in the wall, too. But, you know, just, it's, it's really important that you figure out who you are and don't allow yourself to get lost in other people and other things outside of yourself. Like, really look within, look deep within, spend time with yourself, don't distract yourself all the time with Netflix or Instagram or whatever, TikTok, even though I'm guilty of that plenty. Um, but I feel okay because I know who I am. So if, if you don't feel like you know who you are, don't distract yourself so much, like really sit with yourself, think, what, what, what strengths do I have? What weaknesses do I have? What do I like to do? And who do I want to become? And really kind of write some of these things out and help yourself, basically help protect yourself, the future you, from having to suffer from heartache all the time because someone left you or you lost a job. You know, you're going to have a place you can return to and be comfortable at because this is, this is your map. If you don't have a map, you don't know where you're going. But if you have a map and you really am a, are able to figure out who you are and all the other stuff, then you're going to know where to go next. So, And you're not going to be torn down by bad things happening. I say bad like that because we always think things are bad in the moment. And a lot of times they come back and they, actually being a, they end up being a great thing. So please, if you need to... Do this exercise. And even if you feel like you don't need to, maybe like write some stuff out. Because I think, I think putting your thoughts on paper really helps. Um, it, it just really helps keep things in order. Because as I've talked about a lot, this head up here is a crazy place. A lot of stuff flying around in there. And, and you may lose something on occasion. So it, don't be afraid to write some stuff down. And it's going to help you long term. So thank you for watching. Buy my book. And we've got one video left, and then we're going to get back to normal content. And then for my next book, maybe we'll do the same. But who knows when that's going to come out. Got a lot of writing still, so have a beautiful day.